Johnny Cueto is performing like an all-star, which is exactly what the Giants hoped for when they signed him this offseason. The various wind-ups and personal flair he brings to the mound has quickly made him a fan favorite. Today he looks to complete the sweep of the Brewers, and it's coming up next. Day baseball here at AT&T Park. Our fans love day baseball here at the corner of Third and King. This game will wrap up this three-game series, Giants and Brewers. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, the Giants would love to get a sweep. They'd love to finish the homestand on a high note. And uh, Johnny Cueto is going to be on the hill for the Giants, which is great news. The Brewers, on the other hand, are starting to guide Jimmy Nelson who beat the Giants the last time he faced them. Well, Jimmy Nelson doesn't have a lot of history against the Giants, but it's all good. Two stars, two quality starts, and as you mentioned, the last time he faced him, he beat him in Milwaukee. But you've got Johnny Cueto on the hill, and he's been spectacular. Giants 11-2 and two in games that he started. He's 9-1 and one with an ERA at 2.1. So you figure you got a great chance to win any time he goes out there and toes the rubber. Plus, he's got the hottest guy in the lineup, back in the lineup today. That's Buster Posey catching a day game after a night game. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. Connor Gillespie gets a start at first belt on the shelf. Stay tuned. We'll take you to our CSN Bay Area studios for an update and we'll do that right after this. on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. It's back. The Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the Giants have secured a series win, and they, today they try and break out the rooms and sweep the Brewers right out of town. We've got the series 
finale coming up. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. Madison Bumgarner. Well, he was great last night, as usual. Eight innings strong, gave up just two runs. And while he's definitely fulfilled expectations on the mound, he has definitely exceeded them in the batter's box, become a true legitimate threat at the plate. It is our greater baseball coverage. It's brought to you by T-Mobile as we look back at his seventh inning, A-B, two on, one out. Will Smith on the mound, and he spikes a curveball that allows the runners to advance. Next pitch, he throws a slider for a wild pitch that allows the go-ahead run, an ultimate winning run, to score and pitchers are now showing caution throwing Madison breaking balls while he's at the plate and Bruce Bochy said that's what makes Madison so special because he is a legitimate threat now as a hitter they're showing him respect as a hitter now Madison did draw two walks last night and he did not look happy about it he wants to hit we got to turn the page though Johnny Cueto's on the hill for the Giants this afternoon series finale coming up lineups first pitch crew and kite all coming your way Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. It's back. The Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the Giants have secured a series win. And they, today they try and break out the brooms and sweep the Brewers right out of town. We've got the series finale coming up. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. Madison Bumgarner. Well, he was great last night as usual. Eight innings strong, gave up just two runs. And while he's definitely fulfilled expectations on the mound, he has definitely exceeded them in the batter's box, become a true legitimate threat at the plate. It is our greater baseball coverage. It's brought to you by T-Mobile as we look back at his seventh inning, A-B, two on, one out. Will Smith on the mound, and he spikes a curveball that allows the runners to advance. Next pitch, he throws a slider for a wild pitch that allows the go-ahead run, an ultimate winning run, to score. And pitchers are now showing caution, throwing Madison breaking balls while he's at the plate. And Bruce Bochy said that's what makes Madison so special because he is a legitimate threat now as a hitter. They're showing him respect as a hitter. Now, Madison did draw two walks last night and he did not look happy about it. He wants to hit. We got to turn the page though. Johnny Cueto's on the hill for the Giants this afternoon. 
Series finale coming up. Lineups, first pitch, crew can kite. All coming your way. Mark, and it is, folks, a beautiful day. And our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Today and all the other days this month would be a great way to get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open every day. 61 degrees here at the yard. The winds are brisk again. Humidity at 58%. And the forecast is partly cloudy. Here's the lineup for Craig Council. His Brewers coming in, having lost the first two games in this series. It'll be Jonathan VR to lead it off, followed by Scooter Jeanette. And uh, you can see what Jeanette has done in June. No June swoon for Scooter. Jonathan Lucroy is going to hit third. He's at first base, and it's Neuenheis, Perez, and Flores. Martin Maldonado will do the catching. He'll hit seventh. Presley eighth. And Jimmy Nelson, who beat. The Giants earlier in the season is on the hill. Johnny Cueto. This will be his second start against Milwaukee. Cueto, like Bumgarner, he's going to get a a paid trip to Tampa, correct? San Diego. Oh, all expense paid vacation. That's right. He pitches today. He'll get the weekend off in Tampa, as will Madison Bumgarner. And the Giants, of course, will pick up their expenses. That'll be the reward for pitching well today, and that is going to be his goal. Cueto, 5'11, 220 pounder. He's 30 years old, and he's in his ninth year at the big league level. And what a shot in the arm he has been for the Giants since signing a contract. He's 9 1 with a 2 1 6 ERA. And when he goes out there and 13 starts, the Giants are 11 and 2. Lifetime against these Brewers, he's 10 and 3 with a 2.79 ERA, so he knows this Milwaukee team. I think he's really tight right now. He's about as loose as anybody we've ever seen out there. Levon Hernandez is the only other guy we've ever seen as relaxed as this guy. Bartolo Colon. Completely at home on the mound. Bartolo Colon, indeed. 
And the way he does it is with a fastball that he'll two and four seam, depending on the situation, the hitter swing type. He reads hitters as good as anybody we've seen. He also will give you a curveball slider and a changeup, and uh, he'll throw it out of two or three different motions. He'll quick pitch you. He'll turn around and show you the numbers on his back. He's just really good at upsetting the timing of the hitter, which, after all, that is the essence of pitching. Today, defensively, the Giants are going to set it up this way behind Johnny Cueto. It'll be Pagan, Blanco, and uh, Parker. And the best arm is in right field. Crawford and Duffy will be on the left side of the infield. Panic and Gillespie will be on Gillespie will be on the right side. And Buster Posey, a day game after night game. That's right. He will be in the squad putting down the signs for Johnny Cueto. Game three of this three game series. Giants winning on Monday, 11 to 5, and then a tight one last night. Giants won 3 to 2, although they had many opportunities to score more than three runs. Bright, bright, sunny day here at the ballpark. And the first pitch of the ball game is on its way. And it's inside for a ball. So we get started at 1246. And there's a base hit into left field for Jonathan VR. And VR takes a wild turn. And uh, he'll return to first. And that's how this game gets started. VR's really swung the bat well in the series. Good look at player. Safe to say that if Cueto is going to struggle at all, it's going to be in the first inning. Well, I think you can say that about a lot of good guys, but I agree it's very true with Cueto. I and mean, once he finds his rhythm, I mean, it, he cruises. But just that 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 vulnerability that he'll have in the first inning, where he doesn't quite have the rhythm yet. There's a call strike. He's got a pretty good strike zone to work with today. Joe West, low ball umpire. His corners will breathe, but I think he's an umpire that looks for strikes, and he will control the game. Janetta, 262 with five home runs, 15 driven in. Joe West behind the dish. He's the crew chief. Then it's Ripiger, Kerwin Danley, Andy Fletcher. And a strike, and it's nothing in two. You got to figure that VR at some point is going to go. Yeah, I mean, you don't lead the league in stolen bases if you don't think steal. But Cueto is not an easy guy to steal on, and he has an outstanding move to first base, one of the quickest moves on a pickoff in all the National League. Swing and a miss. I thought maybe he had fouled it, but he did not. And Jeanette walking back like he quite can't quite believe that. 0 2 fastball four seamer just throws it right by him. And I think that's why I think he doesn't believe it. I think a lot of guys feel that they can't have a fastball thrown by him, but Johnny Cueto just did. Here's Jonathan Lucroy. Hit his 10th home run of the season. In the game last night against Bumgarner. And he takes a pitch wide, one ball and no strikes. That's 1.01 seconds from the time Johnny Cueto starts his move to the time it gets to the glove of Buster Posey. And that's fast. The average speed is 1.25, very acceptable by any pitching coach. So 1.01 will definitely give Buster Posey an outstanding chance to throw out a runner. So VR gets back standing up. Cueto's going to keep him close. But we watch Cueto mess with the hitters and really mess with the timing that a hitter has to him. Well, he does the same thing with a, a potential base dealer at first base. Now he's got him picked off. And Cueto is going to run at him. And Cueto tags him out. How about that? I don't know if I've ever seen that before. 
one unassisted. And we're going to make it our Ford right choice, and why not? You don't see it very often. But hey, VR had a good jump. Got to go with it. Quito realized that he tagged him with his glove, and the ball wasn't in the glove, so he went back and tagged him again. There's ah, the glove tag. There you go. Oh, knocked him down. Perfect. <laughs> He's fun to watch, folks. He does so many things well. I mean, that's like the king in his court move. He didn't need anybody else. He didn't. Pick him off and just go run him down. One ball and one strike to Jonathan Lucroy. 26 at bats for Lucroy against Cueto. He's got six hits. One and two. Little cutter right at the base of the knees. Feel pretty much straight away. And this is popped up. Gillespie's got a shot at this. And he puts it away, and that'll end the inning. Nice inning for Cueto. Brewers, nothing. Giants coming up. And here's Bruce Bochy's lineup against Jimmy Nelson. It'll be Blanco, Panic, and then Brandon Crawford. Crawford, last 11 games. Yeah, not bad. Eight RBIs. Posey, Duffy, and Pagan. Parker's going to hit in the seventh slot. Then it's Gillespie and Cueto. On the hill today for the Milwaukee Brewers will be Jimmy Nelson. Making start number 14. Five and five with a 3 4 3 ERA. 81 innings. Amassed 71 hits allowed, 65 strikeouts. So two, it's about a two to one strikeout walk ratio. When you take your pass against Nelson, you'll see a good sinking fastball, and it'll be low to mid 90s. It's, it's you'll see a lot of ground balls, and he uses it a lot. He's also got a curveball slider and a changeup. Lifetime against the Giants, one and one, two starts, two quality starts. He beat him earlier in April in Milwaukee. He's 26 years old, 6'6", 250 pounder. He's a big fella. He's in his second year at the big league level. Here's Blanco who takes down low. Blanco one for three on Monday. And Gregor came back and had two hits in the game last night. Rolls this one behind Billy Hayes and it's one ball and one strike. It's our ball dude. Balls in one strike. I think that was Cheryl Boykins who are, is our ball do or ball babe today down there on the right field side. Two balls and a strike to Blanco. One for three lifetime against Jimmy Nelson. Lifted to left. 
It's Presley moving back and he'll make the catch one out. Let's take a look at the Milwaukee's Brewers defense playing behind Jimmy Nelson today starting the outfield from left to right. It'll be Presley, Neuenheis and Flores. VR and Perez on the left side of the infield. Jeanette and Lucroy on the right side. Martin Maldonado will be in the squad put down the signs and Maldonado has a cannon folks hard to steal on. Panic takes a pitch down low. Two for four on Monday for Joe Panic. Two for five in the game last night. Two balls and no strikes. Our Expo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer will show you the very compact motion from the 6'6", 250 pound Jimmy Nelson. Three and oh. Being 6'6 six, six is an advantage because you, if you have a three quarter or a high three quarter release, you're going to have tilt. You're going to have angle provided you could hit the knee high location, which is one of Jimmy Nelson's strengths. However, 6'6 six, six can also be a detriment when you try to get mechanics enough to be able to repeat the arm stroke. Well, he repeated it, but in a negative way. And that's going to bring up Crawford. Here's the one guy on this Giants team that could probably hit in every spot in the lineup and would know how to do it. And he's a shortstop. How about that? You now today, hitting out of the three hole, hasn't done a lot of that. I think he likes the idea of getting up in the first inning, guaranteed. Panic with a good lead. And Crawford sees the first fastball he likes, and he lifts this one out to Neuenheis, who makes the catch. Two outs. Here's Buster Posey. A lot of these folks that are regular midweek day game attendees usually don't get to see Buster Posey. So his day off comes after a night game. And we heard a lot of people appreciate it when he was introduced that he is in the lineup today. Well, you can count Johnny Cueto. Amongst those people that appreciate it. Low and in to Buster Posey. Two for three on Monday. And then a nice four for five last night. So Buster's got six hits in this series. And that is raises average up to 270. Swing. Miss one ball and one strike. Giants have luxury of having two good catchers that everybody on their pitching staff enjoys throwing to. Good framers, quiet targets. But if you're a, a pitcher, you want a guy who's swinging the bat well. Jet last night, Buster Posey, four hits. He's hot. Two balls and a strike with Matt Duffy on deck. Just getting started here at AT&T Park. Inside corner two and two. The Dodgers and D-backs are underway. Rockies and Yankees are underway. Yeah, hey, a lot of West Coast baseball. Padres in Miami underway. Get away, day, huh? Yeah. Two and two to Buster Posey. Ooh, Buster had a rip. A good pitch to hit. Ooh. 
little hang and slider right up at the belt. And he just missed it. Posey, high chopper. Nelson will grab it and flip on to first, and that'll end the inning. No runs, a walk, one left after one. Here at AT&T Park, it's nothing, nothing. is brought to you by AAA. Get a free Giants all-season blanket. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA.com slash Giants or to a AAA branch for details. No score as we head to the second inning. And this is Neuenheis who takes a strike. Together we're busters. Swing and a miss, nothing in two. Guy said, My name is Buster, too. Here's Buster. <laughs> Put a circle around that guy. He's <laughs> Keep him corral. He's going to take off. One and two to Neuenheis. Joe West says, yep, you went around. All right, let's check in with the uh, originator of Busters in a Squat, Amy G. <laughs> Something like that, right? Well, guys, when I saw Brandon Belt's ankle last night after the game, I thought I was going to have to be bad news. Amy, he got a direct hit on that right foot in the sixth inning last night. But good news, baby giraffe is one very lucky giraffe. It's just a contusion. He had it wrapped today with a lot of ice, and he is available to pinch hit today, Bruce Bochy said. We'd like to stay away from him, give him tomorrow off as well, and have him ready to go on Friday. Guys? All right, thanks, Amy. So semi-good news, Amy. Yeah, absolutely. So was I off on this Buster thing? No. No. She was the originator. Right. Buster, Buster knows squat. Knows yeah. squat we knew was, that. That's Amy G original. We were just pulling Amy's chain a little bit. Two balls and a strike to Perez hitting 301. On the ground foul watching his at bats. He takes a pretty good hack Mr. Perez. Here's the injury. It felt right on that right. The bottom of his foot. Uh, it, lit up. Hit, it really was. And we all held our breath because we thought there's a true possibility it could be broken. Perez or make that. Plato quick pitch Perez and he got him. 
And take a look at the quick pitch. There'll be no 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 leg lift. Just quick go. And Perez just simply not ready to hit. And that's the beauty of the quick pitch. Upset the guy's timing, and that indeed is exactly what Johnny Cueto did. Threw it right by him. If it works at all on a hitter, it should only work once. That's it. Here's Ramon Flores. Flores takes low, one ball and no strikes. But if you're a hitter and a, and a pitcher does that to you, you feel like your rights have been violated. At the knees, it's one ball and one strike. Gillespie, Cueto, side retired. For the Giants, Duffy, Pagan, Parker coming up. is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Check out the July 4th Family 4 Pack, and it's presented by Chevron. Four tickets to the July 4th game against the Rockies, $25 Chevron gas card, and it's just starting out at 99 bucks. For more information, visit sfgiants.com slash July 4. Here's Duffy. Duffy takes a strike. 244, three home runs, 19 driven in. Hmm. I wonder if Duffy was looking off speed. Or he just didn't see that pitch. I don't think he saw it very well, but I also think it had big time movement on it. We're talking about Jimmy Nelson's strength on the fastball, and it's a sinker. And that thing just bottomed out. And Duffy doesn't waste any time on an 0-2 pitch. He comes up with the Giants' first hit in this game. Now, how do you hit a sinker ball? Or you look up, and that's exactly where that pitch was. I mean, that was right out there at the belt, and it does not have a lot of sink up there. You get fade, you get a little movement, but you don't get sink, like we saw in the previous pitch. And Duffy in it. Two strike mode beats him. Nice at bat. Here's Pagan. Pagan at 274. Couple of home runs, 14 driven in. One for four in his first start back off the disabled list last night. Scored a run, knocked in a run. Out of play. When you score a run and knock in a run, and there's only three runs scored, then you've contributed quite a lot, and he did last night. 
Yes, he did. Jimmy Nelson is not especially quick out of the stretch. You can get a good jump off him, but Martin Maldonado, the catcher, I mean, he's got a cannon. Pagan takes a strike, so another quick 0 2 from Jimmy Nelson. That's a 1.37 unload time for Nelson, which is slow. 1.25 is average. And every tenth of a second is three feet. That's the that you're given the, the base runner. But Maldonado's arm can make up for it. On deck is Jared Parker. You know, that's the one thing we, we don't see infield anymore before a game. That used to be something that we used to do every day. You could see a good catcher's arm. I mean, it's it's fun to watch a guy with a great arm throw. Lifted to left. More work for Presley. So Pagan's retired. One out, and here's Parker. Yeah, and it's kind of a shame, too, because you know what guys with great arms like to do? They like to show it off. Sure, they do. Well, the good arms, if you're going to watch infield someday, they're either going to come from the catcher spot, the third baseman, or, and usually the shortstop and catcher are the ones that are going to win the good arm contest. Here's Parker. This could be a good mix for Parker. Low ball hitter. Nelson likes to throw a lot of knee high sinkers. And it hit him. So he opens up the at bat with a curveball, hits him right on the foot. And just like that, Nelson puts the Giants in scoring position for free. So right on the top of the right foot. Is that in the Brewer Scott report on the Giants? Yeah, he hit the top of the foot. Well, he catches a break there. I mean, that thing didn't back up like. Brandon Bell's did last night and that hit his foot and went the other way. This one just kind of glances off the top. Who's boat you think it stop hitting my guys in the foot. And they're not intentional. I mean you're not going to hit a guy in the, with a breaking ball. Doesn't make it feel any better but. Here's Gillespie. Pitch strike and it's 0 1. This has been very aggressive, especially as a pinch hitter going after that first pitch. It almost looked like he was disappointed there that he didn't go after that first pitch. Out of play in a quick 0 2. On deck, Johnny Cueto. Oh and two to Connor Gillespie on the ground to third. Stepping down the bag is Perez, and this one goes into the seats. And Gillespie's aboard, however, no run is going to be allowed to score. Sometimes you wonder if those umpires will give you that extra base. Well, right down the line, and Hernan Perez is going to have a shot at a double play, an accurate throw, and he gets him. Come up, steps on with his left foot, and then there's the airmail.
So no one on one with the advance of the base. Cueto takes low. Johnny Cueto, you know, he can be tough in that batter's box, especially with men in scoring position. He's going to put it in play. And remember, he likes to bunt. To right field. Side retired. Third inning coming up. It's nothing, nothing. Brought to you by First 5 California. Talk, read, sing. It changes everything. Hey, you want to win the ultimate fan experience? In yes. partnership with Comcast Sportsnet, you can enter to win prizes in the Dream Stakes sweepstakes. To enter to win, visit your local Bay Area dugout store. Grand prizes include, you can throw out the first pitch, $1,000 shopping spree at the dugout store, and much, much more. For more info, go to sfgiants.com slash dreamstakes. A lot of good attitude. Good looking group. It's a great time to be a kid. I mean, school's just about out for the summer. Some are out. Some are getting close to it. Summer vacation. How great was that? Yeah. Just in time to bale some hay. Cultivate. Yeah, it was great. We didn't bail a lot of hay on my block. I got to be honest with you. My my dad was thrilled when school was out. He got three other employees. He got, well, the other two brothers didn't do much. <laughs> Careful, your one brother's our producer. He is listening. And your younger brother. He may be watching the game as well. Yeah, my younger brother watched TV. Two and two. These guys are psyched. There's brothers. You can tell by the ears that they're brothers. Mom just dropped the. Sit down. Krukenkaip and David John, our heroes, brought glove and gamer babe from Oregon Coast to snare a ball for our mantle, our first game. Well, welcome. Where are they where they could snag a ball? Uh, they're in the bleachers in right field. I got you. So they could actually snag a ball there. Yeah, they could. Hey, Duff's here. Duffman. God, I feel much safer now. Yeah, well. Certain things that just make you feel safer. There, a Hummer and that guy right there. 
<laughs> Three balls and two strikes. And it's right there at the knees and Maldonado had to know that that was a strike. Four strikeout. Base seven guys strike seven of, or four of them out three by swing and miss. Here's Alex Presley. Johnny Cueto making sure everybody in the infield got set. Cueto knows, like the Giants know, Presley will bunt. He's got good speed. Panic to his right. Two off. Bring up Jimmy Nelson. Jimmy Nelson is three for twenty five on the season and a breaking ball for a strike. And it's 0 and 1. Boy, a little cloud comes over and just darkened everything up. 0 and 2. You see Jimmy Nelson on the mound. He doesn't look all of 6 6, but he does when he gets in that batter's box. He makes that batter's box look small. Front door slider didn't miss by much. Sometimes you can surprise an umpire. And that'll do it. Five strikeouts through the first three innings for Johnny Cueto. Top of the order coming up for the Giants, and that would be Gregor Blanco. To Bumgarner as a hitter. Bruce Bochy says it shows you how much respect he has as a hitter. He is pitched like a hitter. He's getting 3 2 breaking balls, 2 0 breaking balls. Pitchers know that he has good power, and if you make a mistake, he can do some damage. It makes the pitcher be a little careful, and sometimes that can bring good things up, like a wild pitch, or maybe even two wild pitches, like last night. Will Smith offer those wild pitches. Here's Blanco. Blanco panic Crawford three left handed hitters against Jimmy Nelson. 
And pitch number one here in the third is wide. One ball and no strikes. Blanco tried to bunt his way on and he clips Maldonado behind home plate. If you're going to bunt like that, it looked to me like he was trying to take it with him and bunt down the first base line. What, what kind of a pitch are you hoping for? Well, if you could get a, a breaking ball that is a little up and in, kind of like what you might want to have us to hit, something soft middle in is the perfect pitch to bunt. Two balls and one strike. And if you're buttoned down the third baseline, something soft away would be perfect. The softer the pitch, the easier it is to deaden. Inside corner, two and two. I think Jimmy Nelson, you would call sneaky fast. Yeah, he's got really nice finish on his pitch. He gives good sink. Yeah, that movement really exploded on Gregor Blanco. He did not think it was a strike. And he shoots it up the middle for a base hit. Nelson almost caught that. Warriors playoff central Warriors and Cavs game six. That'll be tomorrow night. That's when coverage begins at 430 right here on CSN Bay Area. Greg Poplar, Saint, will all be on set. Well, he's ready. Yeah, so is he. This guy, well, he's ready. He's just on the phone. Cutting a deal. Here's Panic. Blanco, three steals. He's been thrown out twice. He is a threat, though. He, he knows how to steal a bag. Well, as we said earlier, he will get a good jump against Jimmy Nelson. He is not quick out of the stretch. I say that about a lot of guys 6'6. Six, six. Takes a little while to get unwound, and it's true for Nelson. There's the bunt. No! Luke Cry off the bag, according to Mark Rippiger. Pat Murphy, the bench coach, in contact with his folks up in the Brewers Clubhouse. I don't know. I, I think, don't know. I think Mark Ripperker's got a point. And they're not going to challenge it. So it'll be a sacrifice for panic and an error on the throw. Just off the base ever so much. And this was not a, enough proof to reverse the call. Ducroy, normally the catcher playing first base today just to keep his bat in the lineup. You know, there, there's another point to this too, Mike, as Crawford stands in. Game last night, the Brewers challenged in the fifth inning. Lost the challenge and then lost their challenges. And then later on in the game, they had one that would have gone in their favor. They couldn't challenge. Yeah, play at second base. Craig Council, the skipper of the Brewers, opting not to challenge. Wasn't a sure thing. Crawford takes the low. And really, anymore, that's what we're seeing. When a play has been made and a call has been made, to reverse that call, it's got to be obvious. If it's close, you're talking about a coin toss, and most of the time it doesn't get reversed. Just a little high. He close pitch, 3 and 0.
Joe West thought about it. Three balls and two strikes. Or three balls and no strikes. And a strike. Three and one. Three balls, one strike. And the walk, and they're loaded for Buster Posey. How about that? Well, that's a good thing. As hot as Buster Posey has been these last, well, but this whole homestand, really, to get him up where they can't pitch around him. They've got to attack with the bases loaded. They have to go into that strike zone. That's where you want to be. Posey's numbers with the bases loaded are a bit surprising. 242 lifetime hitter. Now that's Derek Johnson, the pitching coach. Selfie. Tell me that you don't have one of those things that hook onto your phone. Uh, I do not. What is it called, Jeff? A selfie stick. A selfie stick. Yeah, I don't. I know what to get you now. Yeah, give me a selfie stick, will you? You'll be scratching your back with it. That's what you'll be doing. <laughs> I'll find a good use for it. In the dirt, one ball and no strikes to Buster Posey. They're made for people with short arms. Kevin Durant does not need no. a selfie stick. He does not. One ball and no strikes to Buster Posey. No score in this game. Outfield pretty much straight away. Posey and another rip Ooh, on it. 1 0 breaking ball. So Nelson shows some respect. He stays away from the fastball and the fastball count. And what does he do? He hangs a breaking ball and he gets away with one. A big lazy slurve that doesn't do a whole lot. You might like to have that one back. Well, they're just not chasing his sinker out of the strike zone down. The fans, as a group, have been pretty good with passing on those fastballs that start about knee high and then they just drop down. About halfway below the knee. They're not going after him. That's the one he wants you to swing at. So two and one. This is a big pitch for Jimmy Nelson. It's three and one. Easy take there. Plus. He just gave a cleanup hitter a free pass at a 3 1 pitch. Blanco, Panic, and Crawford, those are your base runners here in the third with nobody out. Duffy watching from the on deck circle. And a little fish job. And a base hit. Panic read it all the way. Giants lead 2 0. Buster Posey just got enough of it. It's starting to work for him, isn't it? Well, it is. And we heard Will Clark last night talk about it. You know, he gets it going, he stays inside the ball. Even a good pitch, he can beat you. Because his bat stays in the in the flat zone for a long time. That ball runs up the bat, but he's strong enough to get over the head of the shortstop VR. So taking full advantage of a 3-1 opportunity, but he did it with a good swing. Uh, Panic did a great job. He saw right away that VR wasn't going to catch it. I couldn't tell if he was going to catch it. 
Here's Duffy. And Duffy with a swing. Ain't gonna miss. Crawford at second, Posey at first. For RBIs now, Buster Posey with 31. Out of play down the right field line. It's nothing and two. That little push in that swing. Duffy has come alive though in this homestand. He really has had a very consistent homestand swing in the bat. Good things happen when you start to get a good swing going, and it's happening for him. Duffy, fair ball down the right field line. Crawford is going to score. To third goes Posey. Matt Duffy with a single and an RBI. It's 3 0. Another two strike at bat that he comes up big. Remember, he had an 0 2 base hit back in the second inning to lead it off. And you're taking two strike pitches and beating the pitcher the opposite way. You got you got confidence going folks and this is what he's been looking for. Giants with three hits in the inning. They've reached on an error and they've reached on a walk. Pagan hit a fly ball to left in the second. Quick toss to first, and Duffy's back. Hey, Kite. Oh, yeah. Oh, there. Treading water. Trying to fly to Berkeley. Here's the pitch to Pagan. Pagan rolls one foul. That's Billy A's. No balls in one strike. These guys came with a mission. They want a ball. They will not leave home without it. They, a ball. they may end up that dad's going to have to go to the dugout store, but they're going to go home with a ball. Yeah, they're going to have a, gotta have a ball. On a play, nothing in two. They might not be the only two that age that were thinking the same thing, though. I know when I went to a game as a kid, that's all I was thinking about. Yeah. This guy's just a kid now, too. Oh, yeah. That little baseball right there can turn you into a 10 year old kid very quickly. <laughs> oh, and two to Pagan. One and two. All right, let's take a look at the play. Oh, he had it. Oh, oh, oh. a snow cone without a glove. How about that? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. He is the man. <laughs> That's a great shot. One and two to Pagan. Pagan out swinging. One out, and here's Parker. Parker was hit on the foot his last time up. Posey at third, Duffy at first, only one out. Oh, 
just a wee bit high in the eye of Joe West played umpire. So that would tell me that Joe West is more of a low ball umpire. Oh yeah, he, he's always been a low ball guy. Although you know, every once in a while you will see some high strikes, but usually with high breaking balls instead of fastballs. Good rip by Parker. It's one ball and one strike. My goodness. The older fellows are coming up with the ball. Today. Show me something. Come on. Old guys rule. Not afraid to say that it hurt, too. That happens when you get past 50. Everything hurts. Still celebrating. Oh yeah. So is she. It's the best part about it. Yeah. Next time, bring your glove. It won't hurt. Good view. Watching this 1 1 pitch to Jared Parker. All squirts away from Maldonado. It's two balls and one strike. Maldonado wants to throw so bad. I'm surprised we haven't seen a pickoff attempt. Talked about how good his arm is. <laughs> it's a good one. If you're Parker, you lean on one. Oh, even if it's even if it's a little high, you still lean on it. Especially if a guy hits you in the foot when you're last at yeah. bat. Garner and Joe West with the stare off. This is the best. All right, now they lock on. These are two guys from North Carolina now. This is called the North Carolina stare down. Oh, made me laugh. It was funny at the time. In Wisconsin, that's what they do if you lay. The check in between two guys that age. <laughs> That's right. In North Carolina, <laughs> they don't do that. They just give you the stink guy. Activity now in the Brewers bullpen. It's Jan Marinez. So pitch count in this inning running a little high. There's Mariñez. Oh, and one to Gillespie. Bases are loaded. And this one hits Nelson right in the stomach. And now coming in to score is Duffy. And Nelson's hurt. Maldonado is saying that Gillespie was running out of the baseline. Giants pick up another run. Greg Council is going to come out. Joe West is going to greet him. But the bottom line is, is Nelson got dinged. It's kind of the luck of Connor Gillespie right now. He's a good, a good at bat. It's a good pitch to hit out over the plate at the belt. Sends it right back up the middle. And so the Giants get another run.
So it was Duffy that scored. And he scored on the error by Maldonado. There's Cueto. Cueto hammers one down the right field line into the corner and foul. Folks are digging Johnny Cueto even when he hits a foul ball. Well, it's entertaining. And he's not afraid to hack. Let it go. I mean, he's a backyard boy. You think he put a little wiffle ball back home growing up as a kid? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, his best at bats are when there's somebody in scoring position. And, and if it's, it's got to be a pitch out of the strike zone. Tap foul. But he's hard to strike out in this scenario. I mean, he usually puts the ball in play. Ninth hitter in the inning. Yeah, Blanco let it off of the base hit. He's on deck. Cueto, little dribbler. Nelson's going to tag Cueto, and that's going to end the inning. Here's the action. Buster Posey knocked in a pair. Duffy with an RBI, and then an error by Maldonado, and all of a sudden the Giants lead 4 0. Nineteen sixty three, we go back in time, and that's the day that Juan Marichal pitched the first no hitter in San Francisco history against the Houston Colt 45s at Candlestick Park. It was the first Giants no hitter since Carl Hubble did it in nineteen twenty nine. Marichal walked two, struck out five, and the Giants won that ball game one to nothing. Jimmy Davenport led off with the the eighth with a double and scored on a double by Chuck Hiller for the game's only run. And that's our McDonald's two stories. I miss that guy. Yeah, Jimmy Davenport. Wow. What a gift he was. You and I and Dabby played around the golf in Pittsburgh. It was probably 15 years ago. And we had so much fun, I wanted to do it every time we went to Pittsburgh. And he just, it, it was, he had a way. He, I, I could hit one out of bounds and he'd go, nice shot, Carper. Well, you did darn good there. I mean, I, I mean, that's the best OB hit I ever saw. This <laughs> is great. It's high to VR. It's one and two. I said, Davy, I hit the ball out of bounds. Oh, that doesn't matter. You got all of it. Say that. Two and two. VR's got the only hit in the game. For the Brewers, he opened up the game with a 
A base hit in the center field over Crawford. And in that game against the Colt 45s, former bench coach for Roger Craig, Bob Lillis, he was Houston's shortstop that day against Marischal, went 0 for 3. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, gentlemen, it is time for our Giants in the community. It's presented by PG&E, and last night, Hunter Strickland was on the field before the game to help recognize Megan Plush. She's a junior at Los Lomas High School. Little Miss Megan, guys, she's going places. She's part of the Jefferson Award Students in Action program, and she runs the Global Student Embassy at her high school, went to Ecuador on a reforestation project, helped plant more than five hundred trees in three days after a 7.8 quake struck the country. Hunter, a big supporter of the Student in Action program, and it is very easy to see why. Go, Megan, guys. Megan, way to go, Megan. Jeanette, no balls in one strike. Lucroy to follow. Giants lead 4 nothing. We know pitch wise that's number 42. Big healthy rip by Scooter Jeanette and it's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, he was trying to put two runs on the board with that swing. Yes, he was. His numbers lifetime against Cueto he's one for nine. Mentioned earlier, Cueto does have ownage on these Brewers. Ten and three lifetime. Beat them the second game of the season. VR has been picked off once. Here he gets back with a headlong dive. The walk to VR, the first walk that Cueto has issued. He didn't walk many. He gets Jeanette again. Remember, Jeanette couldn't believe it the first time. How about now? Well, he's in denial as he's heading back to the dugout. Another high fastball. Just catches a piece of. Posey hangs on. Two seam fastball. And I mean, he made contact, but it may have been behind him. He is not figuring it out. I th that one deserved to grab some pine. Yeah, I'm you're serious. Right. Grab some pine meat. Seriously. Here's Jonathan Lucroy. Lucroy popped out to Gillespie in foul territory, and here he lifts one foul and out of play. You know, there are certain at bats that you take home with you, and, and that may be one that Scooter Jeanette takes home with him. I mean, you try and leave the negative at the ballpark. I mean, it's just the way you survive in a sport where <laughs> there's a lot of failure. But there are sometimes against some guys you just cannot forget it. No. <laughs> no balls in one strike. Jeanette's still thinking about it. How am I missing that? Outside to Lucroy. D back still leading the Dodgers 1 0. It's a Clayton Kershaw start. Who did you say hit one out? Ricky Weeks hit a solo shot. That's the only run in that ball game. So nice going, Ricky Weeks. I thought they had a chance there. Uh oh. Ron Motus going to the phone. Yeah, they may look at that. Bochi pulling the timeout. See if they got him. Oh. Well, 
Mark Ripperger at first base making the call. If he tagged him, he might have had him. I think if he tags him on the forearm, they get him. Yep. But I think he just whiffed a little bit. Well, I mean, that, it's pretty good technique, though. I mean, you're always taught to go to that far corner on the base, the farthest corner away from the first baseman's glove, and that's what saved him. If he goes back to the middle of the bag, he's out. That's why there is an advantage if you're a left-handed first baseman. You can get to that part of the bag a little bit better than a right-hander. Tapped off of Lucroy's foot. It's one and two. I don't know, Mike. I have to talk him off the ledge. Yeah, that's Scooter Jeanette. Two strikeouts. He has got a serious ponder going on. Cannot believe it. How did I swing through that pitch? That's when you get to look like that as a player. There is nothing that a coach can tell you no. that make you feel better. Or a teammate. Girlfriend or wife is an outside shot, but that's about it. Out of play again. It stays at one and two. You're right. Your yeah. two year old daughter, now that's a different story. Oh, yeah. That's why kids are saviors. Can't believe it. Well, if you're a pitcher, though, that's the look you want to give a hitter. One ball and two strikes. VR with his lead. Got him. Maybe that'll make Scooter happy. Well, either that or Jonathan Lucroy is going to have the same look on his face. Here's Kirk Neuenheis. So a little change up with a two seam grip. And a swing and miss. Strikeout number seven. Six of the strikeouts that Quito has had have been swing and miss strike threes. And I struck out of the second. <laughs> He's not letting this one go. VR with his lead. Low to Neuenheis. Two balls and no strikes. Giants lead four nothing. It's baseball scooter. We've all been there. Part of the deal. Giants with four runs on four hits. The only hit in the game. For the Brewers, VR opened up the game of the base hit. That's it. On the ground, Gillespie. Side retired. Scooter Jeanette strikes out for the second time. He is not happy. Oh.
presented by authority of the San Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. 4 nothing Giants. We're heading to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Johnny Cueto has been masterful as he puts down another shutdown inning. Just one hit allowed by Cueto through the first four. And the guy that led off the third is going to lead off here in the fourth. Gregor Blanco, one for two. And a first pitch strike by Jimmy Nelson. You have a big inning like Nelson had in the third. Faced nine Giants hitters. He have four runs. This becomes an important hitter in the inning. It's also something that gets talked about in the dugout, in the Giants' dugout. Get him back in his stretch again quickly. Fair ball right down the right field line. This is going to be extra bases. Blanco thinking about three and drops anchor. Anticipate the bag until you get a stop sign from your third base coach. So a two hit day so far for Blanco. Breaks it right over the bag. It's close, huh? Yeah, it was close. Now, did the fans touch the ball? No, they did not. It's right there. It's good. The one fan stopped that young kid yeah. from reaching down and grabbing it. Otherwise, that kid's out in the parking lot. They saved him. By the way, Council went out, had a word with first base umpire Mark Ripley. So here's Panic with Blanco at second base. Strike. Tier strikeout situation here for Nelson. We talked about the importance of getting that leadoff hitter on. Well, not only do they get Blanco on, they get him in scoring position. So after Nelson puts up the four spot in the bottom of the third, he's got some evil thoughts going on right now. This is a strikeout situation for him. And a base hit up the middle. This is going to score Blanco. And the Giants lead 5 nothing. Panic with an RBI single. He's got 26 runs batted in. And one thing Nelson has not done a good job of is that that is keeping breaking balls down. He's had a lot of high mistakes with his breaking balls. It's the knuckle curveball. It just hangs right up at the belt. And for Joe Panic, I mean, that's right into his strength. Back up the belt, go right back up the middle. Activity again in the Brewers bullpen. Jan Marinez, right hander. Crawford 0 for 1. Swing and a pop up straight back and out of play. Yep, brought his glove and lit up the stands. Nice play, had a bit. All right, <laughs> look at Not handshakes, hugs. Crawford. Almost got dinged on the back foot. Next pitch now for Nelson will be number 70. It's not been anything but easy. Yep. Picture friends for life right there. Two balls, one strike. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Double and a single here in the fourth. 
Buster Posey on deck. Nobody out. High to Crawford. Three and two. He walks Crawford. He's out. You're right. That'll be the last hitter he faces. Or if Crawford gets on base. Yes, this is his second hump, so he should be pretty good to go. Without a lot of warm-up throws. And it goes, and Crawford lifts a high fly ball to left. Wind is starting to carry it, but Presley, not a problem. Crawford's retired. Milwaukee, that's got a shot. A whole entire homestand the Giants have seen really stiff winds every day and when they start to pick up is right around two three o'clock in the afternoon and then they don't let go throughout the entire evening that's right that's behind home plate well it's straight out the center on the ground in the right field for Buster Posey he gets into that mode where it just starts to look like he's he's just trying to do that and maybe he was took advantage of that hole but at times he could just make it look so easy and here's Duffy yeah time to head back Posey got another hit and they're gone. Duffy's got a pair of hits, and that one's low and away. Two hits, both to right field, both in two strike situations. Got his batting average up to 250. It's a pretty good take. I think Nelson thought he had a strike. Duffy high and foul on the 2 0 pitch. Two one pitch to Duffy. Look out. Almost got him. Three and one. Little heat seeker pouring in on him. I don't think Nelson can throw the ball straight. I really don't with the fastball. It's a nice problem to have. Duffy fouls it back. It's three and two. Down on deck. Runners go. Swing and a roller foul. Giants now with seven hits in this game. 
The only extra base hit for the Giants happened in this inning. As Gregor Blanco opened up the fourth with a double. Three two pitch. They go again. Out swinging and it's down the left field line. And uh, now Panic realizes that he can score and he does. Joe sat on the ground for a little while, didn't know what was going on. It'll be an error on Maldonado. Check swing right here. And Panic never picks it up. Roberto Kelly, the third base coach, I mean, he's blowing a lung out trying to let Panic know you can get up and score. That's a good thing because Posey was breathing down his neck at third base. I don't know if they're going to give that air to Maldonado or Perez. So two outs. Posey and Panic get credited for steals. That's four steals now for Posey. And that's. Before July 1st. Two balls, no strikes to Angel Pagan. Giants lead six nothing. Brewers have to feel like they've been on the field for two hours. Absolutely. Giants defense are in the dugout, sipping water. Life is good. They got a six run lead. Taking all the way is Pagan. Pitch number 84. Pagan down the left field line. That's going to be a base hit. It's going to knock in Posey, and it's probably going to knock Jimmy Nelson out of the game. Seven nothing. Now reluctantly, Craig Cancel's coming out. I mean, he wanted to get some innings out of Nelson today. They do not get a day off tomorrow. They open up a four-game stand against the Dodgers in Los Angeles. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. We'll be back.
Giants have scored three times here in the fourth. It's seven nothing. As Mourinho is about ready to throw to Parker. And Parker takes one. Is that a scud? Yeah, it almost hit him in the foot. Remember, he's been hit in the foot already once today. So Jan Mourinho is the new pitcher for Milwaukee. Eleventh time he's come in. 17 strikeouts against three walks and 14 innings tells you he's got good stuff. You're going to see mid to high 90s with the fastball. He's also got a slider, kind of a two pitch guy. Loves the smell of his glove. Yes, he does. It's one and zero. Oh. Two balls and no strikes. Connor Gillespie to follow. And a base hit to left field. Pagan's going to score. So Parker joins the party. He picks up an RBI. And here's Gillespie. Four run third and now a four run fourth. Gillespie reached on a fielder's choice in the third. He had a line drive right off the chest or the stomach of Jimmy Nelson. And he did it with the bases loaded and they got a force play at home. Four errors today so far yeah. for the Brewers. It's an odd line score for Milwaukee. Gillespie pops it up into shallow left field. And Presley's going to put it away, but that'll end the inning. So the Giants with hits from Blanco, Panic, Posey, and Pagan, and Parker capped it off. They score four times. It's 8 nothing Giants. More than four runs, it could be worth a new Acra. You could win that new Acra. It's NorCal's Acra's Grand Slam giveaway on CSN. CSN, go to AcraNorCalDealers.com to enter for your chance to win. There's a line drive over Matt Duffy. Off the bat of Perez, and he's aboard with a leadoff single here in the fifth. 100 years old. I bet that lady before the ball game.
watch. He was delightful. Ramon Flores takes wide one ball and one strike. And the pitch is wide to Flores Flores hit a ground ball to Connor Gillespie in the second inning. Pretty straight up not a whole lot of imagination with the way the Giants position themselves defensively on the ground to Gillespie he's going to knock it down he'll get one out for sure on the play Perez down to second. So here's Maldonado. And Maldonado takes down low. On the ground towards right field. Panic's got it on a dive. He gets up and throws, and Maldonado's retired. 4 3, and Perez moves to third. Nice yeah. play. Maldonado, he's got to figure what do I have to do to get a hit? I mean, this is a base hit, this is an RBI, and Joe Panic just says, no, not today. Down to his belly. Remember, he's got the smallest glove in the infield. Most second basemen will make that claim. Gets it right in the sweet spot, shoots him down. Yep, you the man, says Johnny Cueto. Maldonado. Gumby shoulders on that running down the line. I don't blame him. I mean, he's got a four for 40 going. He's looking for a little help. No love there from Joe Panic. Presley takes inside. Meanwhile, Kryptonite. So far, so good. Yeah. That's my partner's Kryptonite right there. I have no willpower when it comes to that. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. You want one? I can. Yeah, well you can save the cherry. I don't even need the whipped cream. Panic. This is going to be a tough play, and it's going to be an infield hit. There isn't much that Joe Panic could do. Coming in to score is Perez. I mean, just too good a pitch. I mean, to think that a grown man hit this ball with a full swing. This ball gets right in his kitchen, but it winds up being a thang. And once it hits the ground with all the spin that's on it, it's a do or die. Here's Mourinez who's going to hit for himself. Up the middle and it hits the mound and a big hop to Crawford and that'll do it. Brewers are on the board. Giants are coming up. Hold the jury.
Giants on top of the Brewers. Time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. September 19, 2010. That's for the Giants. Cody Ross let off the bottom of the first for the Giants and was robbed of a home run by Milwaukee's Ryan Braun. At the time, Bruce Bochy called it one of the best catches he'd ever seen. And that is no exaggeration. That's our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. I forgot about that catch. That was a great catch. Oh, that was a great catch. Cody Russ hadn't had a home run in the Giants uniform. And he really went over the wall to get to rob that one. Well, if he was only get, supposed to hit so many, I'm glad he saved him for the postseason. Uh, it, it turned out rather well for Cody Ross and the Giants. Here's Cueto. Cueto's 0 for 2. And he pops up the first pitch. Right field. Bullpen mound heads up. It happens every time. Well, I mean, there's only two ballparks in the National League where you have to deal with this here at Wrigley Field. And when you're going over, trying to gauge the sideline, concentrating on the play, the last thing you're thinking about is a mound. I mean, he's lucky he didn't get hit with a ball. Yeah, he almost did. And he's lucky he didn't get hurt. Tapped right back to Mourinho's and he will underhand to first. Follow Giants baseball live with MLB.com at bat, the app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day live video highlights, that cast. Download MLB.com at bat and do it today. Blanco's had a nice game. He's two for three, a single, a double. He scored twice. Little tapper that Rinez is going to make the play. Two outs. And here's Panic. That out at them. It's underneath the coke bottle. Yep, she's all dressed up. Got a boner hair. I have a feeling it's a little chilly out there with the wind howling. That's great. She got all fluffed out to come to the game. Here's Panic. Panic's one for two. Actually, he's one for one. See, you were a tall dad. Tall dads are good. <laughs> well, you're a tall dad. Over six feet tall. And Panic has got another hit. <laughs> you just, for kids that age, they can see a lot more. Yeah, they got a good view. I think my daughter was 14 before she said, can I, can, can I crawl up there and sit for a while? No. I always had one of them up there. Yeah, you had to because you had to keep track of them. I had At least you guy, know where one was. I had one guy quit. He was about 18. Yeah. That was the whole point. It was like, no, I don't think so. Outside to Crawford. Brandon Crawford, 0 for 2. Two and 0. Buster Posey's on deck. It's that pitch that Joe West just won't give you. It, it really is right at the point where you could call it a strike. Drives you crazy. And I, I think it's more of a strike than it is a ball, to be honest with you. Well, I guarantee the guy that threw it feels the same way. 
But his zone has never changed. What you're seeing now is the same one he had in 1977 when he broke in. Crawford skies it into center field. They had good wood on it. And Neuenheis will make the catch and that'll end the inning. Giants strand one through five. It's 8 1 San Francisco. Benefiting our troops during the July 4th through the 6th games. Your fundraising package will include a limited edition 4th of July Giants hat and a ticket to see the Giants take on the Rockies. Plus five bucks from each package and will benefit Operation Care and Comfort to aid in their ongoing mission to support troops, veterans, and their families. You go to sfgiants.com slash special events for more information. Top of the order, here's VR. And he's going to run up and take a strike. VR has been on base twice, a single and a walk. The backstop. Giants lead eight to one. This is the sixth inning. Cueto, Johnny Cueto with 67 pitches. He has been dominant once again. The guy who's given a fits is right now in the batter's box. But he's been given fits to everybody. VR's got five hits and a walk in this series. Two strikes. Cueto gets that ball back and he's ready to go. Got him. So Cueto wins the battle. Here's Scooter Jeanette. It's been a frustrating afternoon for Scooter. This is the first one and he, and he could not believe it. However, his second at bat. It blew his mind. So 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, both in high fastballs across the letters. This will be an interesting AB. And Scooter Jeanette's been sitting on the last two at bats now for the last couple of innings, and he smokes a ball right up the middle. Well, jumping on the first pitch, not going to get into a two-strike situation. 
A little fastball down around the knees, goes right back up the middle. That'll change his outlook. Jonathan Lucroy popped out and struck out. In tight, one ball and no strikes. Cueto's next start will be in Pittsburgh, so will Bumgarner's. And tight again, two and zero. Oh. Trying to control the at bat with Cueto, and that's not always the easiest thing to do. Up to middle and a base hit. So back to back singles, and let's check in with Amy G. Amy? All right, gentlemen. Well, Jake Peavy is using his guitar playing and his singing skills to do some good. It's our Healthy Dose of Goodness. It is brought to you by Eric's Deli Cafe. Jake, now a volunteer musician on call. It's a group that performs at hospital bedsides for patients. And Jake, yesterday spent the morning playing at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Jake's a big believer in the healing power of music and was honored to join the new San Francisco chapter of Musicians on Call. Mike Kruko, I think you need to get in on that action. You're a good musician. Guys? I don't know, Amy. I, I don't know. If you go with me, I'll go. Amy, have you heard Mike sing? I need a lead singer. Amy. I tried to take a nap in Milwaukee, and your room was next to mine, and I, it didn't work. Hey, I brought my banjo in this course. You had the, the banjo, you had the harmonica, tuba. You couldn't pack the tuba. It sounded good to me. One ball and one strike. Actually, you can sing a little bit. You're, you're not bad. In my shower. On the ground, it's going to be a fair ball. Gillespie is going to step on the bag. It's out number two. Both runners advance. Gillespie really wanted to do more with that play, but you really couldn't. Going over to his left, that ball kind of came up on him and staying with the the high hop really did not allow him to set his footwork to second base so you're ahead eight to one you take the out well he it's the one out as you're supposed to do is Perez steps up Perez single in the fifth rolls this one to Duffy Duffy has it and that'll retire the side. Nice job by Johnny Cueto as the Brewer strand a pair. Posey's going to lead things off. That's right, Buster.
Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places by Kelly Moore Paints, celebrating 70 years as your neighborhood paint store. By Xfinity, X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. Check out Sports Talk Live, guest for tonight's show, which will be at 5. CSNVaria.com senior insider Ray Ratto. CSNVaria.com Warriors insider Monty Poole. And Cleveland's WEREAM 1490 radio host Delvis Valentine. That's all coming up on, on the Sports Talk Live, and it's coming from Cleveland. Cleveland, tomorrow be the center of the universe. Delvis is in the building. 1 0 to Buster Posey. 2 0 to Buster Posey. Buster Posey, a couple of hits, a couple of RBIs. Good sinker at 94. Mourinho's got a good arm. This is 94 miles per hour, two seam fastball. Look at this thing bottom out. That's good stuff. Posey well, fouls it back. It's two and two. Was he trying to reach for Matt Duffy who waits on deck. Up it in three and two. See Jan Mourinho has a, has a fastball with big time movement good velocity and a slider. What is missing with this picture? On the ground towards the hole. Nice play by Perez, and Perez is going to throw him out. That was a nice play. I think Jan Mourinho's growth is going to be to the changeup. Pick another pitch, another speed, another weapon, especially against left-handers. Here, it's just flat-out good defenses behind him from Perez as he slides into it. 360s. And he had all the time in the world shoots him down. Duffy a couple of hits. Nelson struck him out in the fourth. Two for three. And foul back. Angel Pagan will hit this inning. He's on deck. Giants with an eight to one lead. And that pitch is just high. One ball and one strike. Side two and one. Yeah, pretty good look at the breaking ball there from our camera behind home plate. Two one pitch to Duffy. Duffy hits a high foul and out of play. Just came back, Mike, from a three city trip. Denver, Atlanta, St. Louis. Yep. Up the middle and a base hit. 
in all three of those ballparks had that center field camera that is right over the pitcher which we love and I'm looking here I have to talk to George George Costa he'll, he'll figure it out for us back there two seed fastball and that's a location mistake right at the belt and it's a three hit day for Matt Duffy you can see where our center field cameras are they kind of look over the right shoulder of a yeah. Right handed pitcher. Well, we need to go back to that shot. We need to show George exactly where you want that camera. Here's Pagan. Pagan takes low and away. One ball and no strikes. All right, where, where do you want it, Mike? Well, the ideal spot would be right there. Well, we could do that. I don't know if it's high enough though to look right over the top of the shoulder. It may have to go right in the middle of the scoreboard okay. up there. All right. With our technology, we're in Northern California. Low, two balls and no strikes. But, but it gives you a more realistic presentation of, of breaking balls, especially for a left hander. Look, this is not a bad angle. No. But it's not perfect. Well, that's true. And a base hit for Pagan. Welcome back, Angel Pagan. Boy, has he been a nice shot in the arm the last couple days getting back in the lineup off the DL. It's his second hit. Billy Hayes talking it over. Saying, hey, keep that swing going. That was a good one. Yeah, the three days, three city road trip. It feels like we've been in San Francisco for about an hour and a half. And it's time to leave. I know. Home stands never felt this quick when we were playing in Candlestick. You should never pack after a night game at like 12:30 in the morning, and then finish packing at 6:30 the next morning. Well, you never know what you're going to get. Oh. No. Foul off the backstop. Could get 22 pairs of underwear and a half a bottle of wine in your suitcase. I had 18 pairs of socks and two pairs of underwear on the last trip. <laughs> well, that's all right. You know, if you use those socks right, you can yeah, get away with it. It's true. You got to tie them together, and stretch them out a little bit. Here's the 0-1 to Parker, and Parker shoots it on the ground, and VR knocks it down in time to get one, and that's it. Hit that ball right in the screws. See. Day off tomorrow, the 16th, in Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh. And then maybe our favorite road trip, the A's in Oakland. 20 in a row starting on Friday. I'm ready for that. Yeah, not a problem. The team's playing well. Give it, give them a long streak without a day off. Gillespie takes wide, one ball and no strikes. If it's the other way around, a long stretch like that's not a good thing. If you have a big league scuffle going or you're trying to tread water with big time injuries to your club, that, that can be problematic. But when you're going good, that's when good things happen. Everybody gets into a routine. Gillespie lines this one, and Presley's going to run it down. No luck today for Connor Gillespie. Seventh inning coming up. Giants lead 8-1.
Welcome summary and it's brought to you by, of course, your local Toyota dealer. Plato's been terrific. Jimmy Nelson got roughed up for six earned runs in three and two thirds. The Brewers a little sloppy today with four errors. But supposedly in the series, eight for 12. Yeah. Well, suppose he had a series his rookie year in Milwaukee. Four home runs. It was when the Giants literally took off and caught the Padres. It was that series. As Flores is going to look at a strike and it's 0 and 1. Yep, dad taking daughter to the yard. Another strike, it's 0 and 2. Has bounced out to Connor Gillespie twice. One and two. Two and two. Jeff Samarja on Friday night. Little fish job in the right field, and it's going to fall in front of Parker. So Flores opens up the seventh with a hit. That'll bring up Maldonado. Quato action. Yeah. Johnny Quato starts a new culture here in the Bay Area. I think we might see a few more of those. Hit high and fairly deep into right center field. Blanco's going to catch. And he gets it back into the infield as quickly as possible. One out. So here's Presley. Presley's one for two. A little jam shot that wasn't high enough to catch in the air, had too much spin to catch on the ground, and ended up with an infield hit and an RBI. Here he takes a strike. Pagan coming in, and Pagan will make the catch. That's in foul territory, two outs. Eighty-seven pitches for Johnny Cueto. Well, he has just carved him up, and you know, as we so often see when he goes out there, just so efficient with his pitches. Barnes is in the bullpen. So Carter hitting. Barnes will be the new pitcher. And a strike to Carter. And the pitch swinging a bouncing ball up the middle Crawford dives he can't get it. On the move is Flores he's going to go to third so Carter with Crawford shading Carter to pull that ball snuck through the infield. Yeah. 
Got the ball in on him, but he's just so big and strong. That ball bullet breaks his bat up. I think he hit that ball twice with the bat. And even at that, he still muscles it out past Crawford, who'd been playing slightly the pull in the five and a half hole. Just a double hit right there in the jam and right on the tip of the bat. All a Hunter Pence style. VR has been a tough out for Cueto. Pops the first pitch out of play and a fan made a one hander without a glove. We have seen some great plays today by the fans in the stands. Watch All right. This one. Not a problem. Bare hander. Does it all the time. I believe it. One more look at soft hands. Warm heart. At a bib. Outside the VR, two balls and a strike. VR, a good series. Came into the series at 292. Batting average 301 as he steps into this at bat. Starting to get some stirring around the Giants' dugout, which usually means some bullpen action is about ready to unfold. Two and two. And you can go right back up there again. Yeah. Red alert now for Corey Guerin. Into the club level down the left field line and out of place. Another nice catch. Oops. All over the ballpark. One after another. Well, hey, it's midseason. Yeah, that's right. Hockey's over. There's just a couple basketball games left. Hopefully, just one more left. So, fans should be making plays like this. Well, that was the 2 2 pitch to go out of the strike zone. Hope he chased it. But VR, VR had a pretty nice take there. Giants fans trying to help Cueto out here in the seventh. Got him. And that'll end the inning. Strikes VR out for the second time. He's got nine strikeouts in the game. Giants are coming up.
again tomorrow at 430 on CSN Bay Area. Check it out. The home of the authentic Warriors fan is CSN. Giants are leading eight to one. When it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and repair experts. The new pitcher is Jacob Barnes. Barnes is coming in. This will be the. Second time that he has pitched in the series he only threw two pitches. Last night. Actually threw 19 pitches. He had two strikeouts. That's where the two was. And for the Giants it'll be. Romero Pena. He's going to pinch it. For Johnny Cueto. So Pena just recently called up. And a first pitch strike and it's 0 and 1. Blanco on deck. Following Blanco is Joe Panic. A ball and a strike to Romero Pena. Pena with a swing and a miss, one and two. Giants will leave after the game. They won't get into Tampa until two, maybe three in the morning. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it. For us, that's good. Giants fans, next time you want to grab giant seats, get to StubHub. Get the StubHub app. Not only will you find seats you love, whenever you want, you can find the best seat value for your buck when you sort out by best value. Get the StubHub app today. Never know, maybe they got their seats through the StubHub app. Could have. Absolutely could have. Blanco with a swing and a, maybe a foul. Two for four for Gregor Blanco. Jacob Barnes has good stuff. I mean, you can see mid to high 90s with the fastball, hard slider. Yeah. The dreadlocks, you're going to start to see those like you saw the panda hats. And Blanco's got another hit. So Gregor Blanco's starting to heat up. This is the changeup that got the strikeout from Jonathan VR. That ended things for the Brewers. Fans digging it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Give me some seed. Give me some seed. And for Cueto, a nine strikeout performance. His day is probably done. As we watch Derek Law. Of course, I guess you'd have to say he was done with Pena pinch hitting. Panic took a strike. He's got two hits today. But another good day for Cueto. He has been so consistent, and that's the one thing you strive for in this game consistency on the mound, in the batter's box, in the field. And he has been that for the Giants. Rolls this one behind Billy Hayes, 0 and 2. There's the line seven strong one earned run one walk nine strikeouts 96 pitches. And he didn't keep his defense on the field very long. I mean that's the, the other thing that it should not go unnoticed. Not a lot of long innings with pitch counts and that's essential to keeping your defensive. Team. With fresh legs. And also it. it Makes some better hitters. Yes, it does. So Quito departs with an eight to one lead. Panic at the plate with one out. Blanco, after singling his third hit, waits. And Barnes throws, and it's low and away, two and two. Brandon 
Crawford waits in the wings. And Barnes throws and Panic cues it off the end of the bat to third. Backhanding it is Perez. His throw is wide. Panic's aboard. To his backhand, plenty of time. Just an errant throw up the line. And that's got to be an error. That's a five air day for the Brewers. All the time in the world. I mean, you can't hang that on Lucroy. That's just an errant throw. Base hit. Base hit. Like I said, that's a base hit all the way. It's a good day to be a hitter. Here's Brandon Crawford. Crawford a swing and a miss. Rockies beat the Yankees 5 3. The pitch to Crawford. Swing and a tapper. And Barnes is going to take it right to Lucroy. Two outs, both runners advance. And Trevor Brown's going to get a chance to hit. Chance to hit with two runners in scoring position. I've known guys, I've played with guys, I've played against guys that would have insisted that they hit here. Yeah, absolutely. Buster Posey says no. Let Brown have a chance to knock the pair in. Day game after a night game for Buster Posey. His deal with Bruce Bochy may have been. I'm in as long as Johnny Cueto's in. Well, the two of them hooked up beautifully. One and all to Brown. One and one to Brown. Nice, easy 95. A little cut to it on the outside corner. There's Buster. Another nice day for Buster Posey. Not only did he catch a terrific game. Buster had two hits, had a hit taken away from him by Perez in the sixth. Swing and a miss, one and two. Blanco at third, Panic at second. And Panic at second with a base hit. That'll end the inning. Through seven. Eight one Giants.
Hey, we have a new episode of GMAG coming your way June 18th at noon. Check it out. A couple of storylines. We've got Dave Fleming's road to the broadcast booth. Denard Spann raised by a single mama. The impact she had on his successful career. And Javi Lopez takes a stab at Brandon or Brandon. It's a very tough test. June 18th at noon, guys. All right. We'll be watching, Amy. Chris Stratton is the new pitcher, and he's facing Scooter Jeanette, who's one for three when it's time for a change. Think Speedy, oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. Tap foul, one ball and one strike. Take a look at the numbers for Chris Stratton. Three games, he got his first big league win, and he got it against the Dodgers. 3-0 with a th in three innings. Four strikeouts, one walk. What we've seen from him, we've been impressed with. He's a four pitch pitcher. He's got outstanding command of both sides of the plate. You'll see low to mid 90s with the velocity. He'll use both grips curveball, slider, changeup. Little backdoor breaking ball. It's one and two. Brown, Trevor Brown now catching. Tapped to panic, and Jeanette is retired. Merrill Pena is now at shortstop. Pena snuck into the game. We are usually on top of those things. Here's Luke Croy. Luke Croy's got a hit. Blake Boyer starting to heat up in the Brewers pen. The uh, KMBR folks took, had a little batting practice competition today. And uh, Murph and Mac were part of the group. And this is the first year Lee Hammer hit, and we can see why. He was taking his be his his at bats with loafers on. Yeah, he, he said in the lunchroom that he thought the loafers looked like tennis shoes. Yeah. They did not remotely look like tennis shoes. Two balls in one strike. But I will say this: I tip my cap to him. He got one past the mound. Well. I mean, it was a bolt, too. Yeah, that's after he threw it. I don't think it came off as bad, did it? Paulie hit with a guitar. There's a foul down the right field line and out of play. And Murph hit with a UCLA cheerleading pom pom. It was great. Yep. Yep. Well, it's an annual event. But they and put these. Markers out like 25 points if you hit it here, and then and nobody hits it past the, the, the 25 point marker ever. But they're having fun. There's a shot into center field and a base hit for Jonathan Lucroy. It's a two hit day for Lucroy. The only guy remotely possible to even hit one out would be Tom Tolbert, and he's in Cleveland. But they had a good time. New and Heiss 0 for 3. And he takes a fastball high, one ball and no strikes. The 1-0 pitch to Neuenheis. Neuenheis. 2-0. Very patient hitter. It's a lot of walks. More of a leadoff hitter than a cleanup hitter. Lucroy with his lead. And a 
check swing, but a strike. Two balls and one strike. Two balls and one strike. Fouled out of play, two and two. Another really nice afternoon, midweek crowd. Best. Oh, it's just been spectacular. Our folks love their midweek day baseball. That is for sure. They do, especially now that most of the kids are starting to get out of school. More restaurants around the bay, around the area. Nice walk from Bart to here. I mean, if you're in a really festive mood, the walk from Bart to here, you might not make it. You might stop in a few places and just say the heck with it. It's happened. So three and two. So a 3 2 breaking ball from Stratton. Interesting pitch when you have a seven run lead. The last thing you want to do is start walking somebody, and that's kind of a count 3 2 down or up seven where you want to challenge with your fastball, but we're still learning Stratton. Perez on the first pitch pops it up. Is this going to be adventurous? No, Joe Panic, not a problem. Infield fly was called. Yeah, you're right. They walked from Bart here. I mean, the high dive has claimed a lot of people. They had great intention of getting the ballpark and did not quite make it. Reds Java Hut. Yeah, you got to make it past. The Java Hut. You can do that, then you're well on your way. Also, you can get caught in the water bar, too. Yeah. Epic Roast House. Azumos, Perry's. There's a lot of choices down there. That's not the Perry's, is it? Perry Butler's Perry. I used to see Perry Butler every day at Candlestick. Pitch is wide, one ball and one strike. Well, all the years the Giants were in, in Candlestick, he was the guy that catered the food. Yep. Love Perry Butler. Hank Greenwald's eaten more of Perry Butler's cheeseburgers than any man alive. Maybe not now. But there was a stretch there for about 40 years. Yeah. Yep. Hank, what'd you go to Perry's for? <laughs> burger. Stupid question. Burger. Hank loved his burgers. He did. Two balls and one strike. Three and one. I'm sure Bruce Bochy would like to mention to young Mr. Stratton that this is getaway day. On the ground. And just the thought did it. Nice going. The bottom of the eighth coming up. You could go for a butler cheeseburger right now.
by Honda. No doubt about it today. Johnny Cueto continues his brilliant first half with his 10th victory. Well, he's in line for his 10th victory. Still some work to do yet. But hey, seven strong innings, one earned run, one walk, nine strikeouts. He has pitched like a winner. He is our Honda player of the game. So nice job for Johnny Cueto. He's got a shot to win his 10th. 8 1 Giants. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Lane Boyer, the new pitcher now for Milwaukee, 27th game that he's been in. One on one with a 3 1 3 ERA. And Boyer. Four pitch guy fastball curveball slider change up you'll see low to mid 90s with the fastball. Boyer was the guy that came in the ball game in game one of this series and gave up a, a pop fly bloop base hit broken uh, infield single infield single and then a broken bat single. Why don't walk it out of here with an, with four runs across the plate and nope not one ball was really hit hard. His ERA at the time was just over two, having a great first half, and all of a sudden it goes up to three, just like that. We got a bunch of changes. Flores moves from right to first, Nienheis from center to right, and Broxton comes into the game to play center field. Keon Broxton, great name. Duffy, it's a drive into the direction of Keon Broxton, and he'll put it away. One out. And here's Pagan. So are you ready for Tampa? I am. I was trying to I was talking to the morning guys and trying to figure out is this our third trip since interleague to Tampa? I think it is. I know the one place we never go to is Cleveland. Ever. And Boston. And Boston, Minnesota. The truck's telling us we haven't seen the new park in Minnesota. Uh, Yankee Stadium twice. The old Yankee Stadium and yeah. now the new Yankee yeah, Stadium. So we've seen each one of the Yankee Stadiums. But, I mean, since the early, we've been to Boston one time. One time. Minnesota one time. Pagan's going to bloop one to right, and he's got another hit. And he's going to go for two, and he is going to make it. As he slides hard into second base, that's the third hit for Pagan in the second double. Sort of hooks the little breaking ball that's down knee high in the inside corner. Not a lot of lower body in it, but the Brewers had played Pagan well over towards Triple's alley. It really opened up an opportunity, and he finds it. And that's good acceleration right there. If you're worried about his hamstring and what type of conditions it, it is in, there's proof. It's good. He had the same type of swing as he did when he hit that inside the park home run against the Rockies. A walk off inside the park home run. Here's Parker. Parker almost gets hit again. Take a look at strong hands going down and beating a pretty good pitch. Parker's got one hit, an RBI single in the fourth. Two balls, no strikes. And that falls in for a strike. Two balls in one strike. Connor Gillespie on deck. Eighth inning. A pitch. 
three and one. He stays consistent though, doesn't he, with his strike zone? He really does. And he doesn't really fudge at all. And Joe West has been doing it since 1977, and it's exactly the same strike zone he had back then. There's a walk. Well, join us for our next telecast. It'll be Friday at 4 p.m. Pre-game live at 3.30 p.m. You'll see that game right here on CSN Bay Area as the Giants take on the Tampa Bay Rays, game one of three. Next up on the road. And plus, you get complete pre- and post-game coverage with Giants insider Alex Pavlovich. The home of the authentic Giants fan is right here in CSN. Gillespie, no luck today. Sit the ball hard three times. Nothing. See if he can get a flare. Taps this one to first. Flores will go to the bag. Two outs, both runners advance. And uh, Romero Pena is going to get the two outs. So frustrating for a guy, a bench guy that. Doesn't get many at bats and, and then gets them one at a time. And when you get a start and you hit the ball well, you got nothing. So yeah, he, going back into the dugout. He's not happy with that. I mean, he's happy with what the score is. But it's tough being a bench guy. I mean, patience, it's so hard. But he's doing a lot of things right. He is. He's played a really nice first base tonight. First shot in the Dodgers win today. They beat the D-backs three to two. Scott Van Slyke had a three-run home run, and that ended up being the difference in the game. Two old pitch on the ground and in the right field a base hit Pagan's going to score here's the throw home and Parker's going to score and poor Blaine Boyer it's happened again You're absolutely right Blaine Boyer everywhere else in this league he has been brilliant in this ballpark he has not done well and this is Pena coming up big, a knock, a couple of RBIs, his first RBIs as a giant. And he gets to join the party. Gregor Blanco's got three hits. The Giants have 16 total. And a strike to Blanco, and it's 0 and 1. This has really been a great homestand for the Giants. Giants coming into the game today, five and two on this homestand. They lost the first game in a two game series to the Red Sox. They lost the first game in the Dodgers series to Clayton Kershaw. That's it. And uh, for the most part, it's been the starting pitching. And now, a couple of these games, they've broken through offensively. Well, and I think it's important when you go into a, a road trip on the East Coast, you're going to play two good teams, Tampa Bay Rays, the Pittsburgh Pirates. I mean, you need to bring some offense with you. Yes, you do. Blanco pops it up. Perez is going to have a tough shot on this one, and he hangs in there, and he makes the catch. Giants score two on two hits and a walk. Ninth inning coming up.
Today, after Giants post game live on CSN Bay Area, Kelly Johnson and Ahmed Farid, they're going to do the honors. You're going to get reports in Cleveland about the Warriors, clubhouse reaction, Alex Pavlovich. He's going to have his post game notes. Check it out. Here's Maldonado who takes down low. Maldonado, Presley, and then Broxton. It's a big at bat for Martin Maldonado. Parker. One out. Because he goes into that bat hitting 098, and he's a backup catcher. He's not getting a lot of reps. But he is off the interstate and on the bingo card. Here's Presley. He's having the same. Feeling the same way that Connor Gillespie. Except Gillespie's, Gillespie's team has got a nine run lead. Presley takes low, one ball and no strikes. Well, you're right. I mean, it, it, it's a little bit easier to eat an over when your team wins. Yeah, and plus, look, it's a little easier to show the hang dog when your team is losing if you have a you know for five you start showing a lot of hang dog when your team wins you guys don't really appreciate that. that's not a good thing there's a strike at the knees but you do get to echo the standard line if your team's winning and you have an over five somebody has to make the outs yeah, that's true there were the uh, Swing and a miss. One and two. You know where the hang dog, if you have a bad day offensively but you win, is in the minor leagues. There you can see some hang dogs with even if your team wins. Yeah. It really does become more of an individual game in the minor leagues. You're trying to get to the big leagues. And it's all about the numbers. Not all the time. Well, uh, hey, if you're a starting pitcher and uh, you, there's a couple guys in your start rotation, they're doing really good. Especially at the Triple A level, you're thinking, you know, I, I'm, maybe, I'm not in line for some for a job if somebody goes down. Maybe a couple of tough outings wouldn't be a bad thing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we want to win, but uh, putting five earned runs on that guy would not be. The end would of the really world. like that long reliever to pick up the W <laughs> yeah, in this one. <laughs> It's human nature. You triple A, I mean, you really are a hamstring away from a job at the big leagues. Provided you're the guy who's hot at the time. On the ground. Gillespie flawlessly two down. But when you get to the big leagues, you better. You better stick it somewhere because nobody wants to see it. Yeah, if you have a hang dog and your team's winning, you better go stand in the closet till it goes away. If you get labeled an eye guy, Ooh. good luck. Broxton takes the pitch down low. Is high, two balls and no strikes. Out of play, this one headed to the upper deck. Not close to our splash can, but in that general area. Well, if you can get to the upper deck, that makes it a good yard, according to John Miller, who believes that can only be a good ballpark if somebody can hit a foul ball in the upper deck. And that one ended up in the upper deck.
Two balls, two strikes. Three and two. On the ground to Joe Panic, and that's the ball game. Giants sweep the Brewers, and today they do it with a lot of scoring in the third and in the fourth. It turns out to be a laugher, a bit of a laugher. And, uh, and the Giants, with that win, now have 41 wins, and Johnny Cueto has. 10 of those 41. How about that? Well, it's just uh, another remarkable outing of consistency from Cueto. But really, the Brewers kind of shot themselves in the foot. They committed four errors today, and you've got to win those games, and the Di Giants do, and now they have great momentum heading out on the road. So the Giants pound out 16 hits. They scored 10 runs. And, uh, and Johnny Cueto now 10 and 1, and now lifetime 11 and 3 against the Brewers. Final score. Giants 10, Brewers 1. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Easter and Giants postgame live with interviews in the wrap starts right now.